Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this relaxing yoga practice. My name's Neira and I'm delighted to be joined by my boyfriend and assistant tonight, Mikael, who will be showing you the practice. Um, it's not suitable for me because I'm pregnant and also uh, have hypermobility in some of my joints. Um, so if you are also pregnant um, or postpartum, uh, and have hypermobility, you might want to avoid this sequence. But otherwise, uh, really great to have you with us. And we're starting on our front, uh, coming into Sphinx pose. So for this pose, coming on to the forearms and bringing the elbows directly underneath the shoulders so that you're making a perfect right angle with your arms, bringing um, the hands and the elbows really close into the body, so they're shoulder width apart, pressing the forearms and the hands into the floor. Then press the tops of the feet into the floor, engage the glutes, press the pubic bone into the floor to take some of the pressure and compression out of the lower back. And then most importantly, really focus on opening through the chest, widening the collarbones, and drawing the shoulder blades together and down the back towards the kidneys. So really focusing on that upper back. Lovely. Back of the neck is long, so you can perhaps tilt, lovely, tilt the chin down slightly so you've got a nice long back of the neck and then maybe closing down the eyes so you can really focus on how you're feeling at this moment, at this present moment. Not in the past, not in the future, not 30 minutes ago, not in an hour's time, but right now. Taking deep inhales and exhales. Focusing on pressing the forearms into the floor to lift up. In yoga, we always ground and connect to the earth, but at the same time, we also lift towards the sky. Keeping the breathing going, glutes engaged, and the slight compression that you're feeling in the back, if it's intense pain or intense discomfort, of course, come out of the pose, but if it's a compression that you're feeling, it's one that's beneficial and undoing a lot of the postures that many of us have during the day where we're rounding the shoulders forward, where we're collapsing into the chest, um, really not allowing ourselves to breathe freely. Um, a lot of us have overworked chest muscles and underworked back muscles and a pose like this can really help to counter that. Really, really nice. Gently coming out of the pose, you can lower your body down to the floor and perhaps come onto the forehead just for a few seconds, taking a few deep breaths. Sending the breath to any areas that might feel tight and then coming into puppy pose. And for this, we're coming first onto all fours, so knees directly beneath the hips, hip width apart, hands underneath the shoulders. You might wanna to move towards the back of the mat, to give yourself space. And then keeping the hips exactly where they are, starting to walk the hands forward. Now I'm gonna put a block down for Mikael, for him to rest his chest on, because what you're trying to do is bring your chest and your forehead to the floor. If you're very flexible, if you're very flexible, you might be able to bring the chest fully to the floor and then place your chin on the floor. But otherwise, you might still be off the ground. Um, obviously, without the blocks, that's where Mikhail would be, and that is absolutely perfect. Just stay wherever you can hold a comfortable breath. And again, what you'll be feeling here is an opening in the upper back, a relaxing of those muscles. It's also relaxing through the shoulders 
and allowing an opening in the chest. Deep inhales and exhales. Chest opening and back bending are two movements that we don't do a lot in daily life. So when we have the opportunity to in the physical practice of yoga, we should take that opportunity. Deep inhales and exhales, just holding for a little longer. Relaxing the jaw, relaxing the space between the eyebrows. And when you're ready, very slowly coming out of the pose as we come into child's pose, which will be the next position. So for this, walk the hands back, move as slowly as you need to. There is no rush at all. And then bringing the toes together, the knees as wide as the mat, walking the hands forward and simply placing your forehead on the floor. And just really letting everything go here. So with every inhale, you're filling the belly, you're filling the chest space. With every exhale, maybe allowing the hips to sink a little further towards the heels. You can encourage the hips a little bit by straightening the arms and gently pushing against the mat with your hands just for a few moments and then letting those arms go again and just letting the hips naturally go where they want to. Again, softening the forehead Softening the jaw, tightness in the jaw can often be linked to tightness in the hips. So when we relax the jaw, sometimes it allows us to find more space in the hips. We also often hold a lot of emotions in our hip area. A lot of tension, a lot of stress can be carried in that part of the body. So if anything comes up, emotionally or mentally while you're in this position. Breathe through it. It won't last forever. Just accept it without judgment and let it pass you by with every breath. As we press our forehead into the mat, we're also stimulating the third eye energy point uh, known as a chakra in yoga. And that can improve our focus, our concentration, our intuition. Just a few more breaths here. And then slowly walking the hands back to come into pigeon pose. Just really, really slowly moving at your own pace, coming back to an all four position. And from here, you're gonna bring the right knee behind the right wrist as you bring the right foot behind the left wrist, flexing that right foot. Now, the closer the foot is to the hand, the more intense a stretch this is gonna be. So you might wanna bring it closer to the left thigh exactly as Mikhail is doing. You're reaching the left foot back straight and bringing the hands back to either side of the hips aiming to get the back as straight as possible. You might need a block here. You can also use a cushion or a pillow under the right hip. 
when you've brought yourself up as straight as you can, tu peux aller derrière un petit peu. Ramène les mains derrière. That's it. Then slowly walking the hands forward. Slowly walking the hands forward and coming to bring the forehead to the floor. Flexing the right foot. It's really important to protect the right knee. And trying to keep the back foot absolutely straight, not turned in, not turned out. Breathing here. This can be a very, very intense stretch for the right hip, the right glute. You might even feel it in the thigh or the lower back. Just staying with it, again, relaxing the jaw. And also taking care not to sink too much to one side of, or the other. So if you've dropped really far towards your right hip, Try and correct that by moving the weight a little to the left. Keeping the breathing going. Lovely calm breath. And when you're ready, coming on to the other side. So very slowly walking the hands back. Move really, really slowly here. Take your time to tuck the left toe under and perhaps lift the left leg so you have space to release that right leg. Back to all fours and then bringing the left knee behind the left wrist and the left foot towards the right wrist, flexing, flexing, flexing that left foot, reaching the right foot back as far as you can. This also opens um, the hip flexor of the back leg, moving the hands back a little further so that you can bring the back as straight as you can and open through the chest and then slowly walking the hands forward, bringing your forehead to the floor. Now, one side might feel very different to the other. That's perfectly normal in any part of a physical yoga practice. We all have various imbalances in our body that we can work on through yoga. Relax the jaw, relax the space between the eyebrows. Remember that you can adjust the position of that, the foot of the leg that's bent. So if you want more of a stretch, you bring the foot closer to the arms. And if you want less of a stretch, you bring that foot closer towards the back thigh, the right thigh in this case. Keeping that breathing going. A 
Again, if anything comes up in this deep hip opener, just letting it pass you by and just focusing on the breath and really tuning into the details of the physical sensations, getting to know your body, getting to know yourself as we hold these postures for a little more time. Really slowly start to come out of the pose, walking the hands back towards the legs, gently, slowly, no rush at all. Tucking the right toe under to maybe allow yourself space and maybe just come onto the knees, do anything that you need to here, just to take a second. Maybe a few beats in child's pose. And then we come into supine twist on the back where we'll cactus the arms. So coming onto the back. So cactusing the arms, meaning that you bring them into a position where they're at right angles. Or you can spread the arms straight out in a T. So either arms in a T or arms in a cactus position. You've got the knees together, the feet on the floor, the legs are bent. Inhale and then exhale, drop the knees towards the left, look towards the right, We're turning the head to the right, keeping the right shoulder on the floor. Breathing here. So with twists like this, and this is one where you can really let go and let the body sink into the floor, it helps us reset the spine, get back to a healthy posture. Really keeping that breathing going, softening the face, noticing in every pose if there's areas where you tend to hold tension. So for some people that might be the space between the eyebrows, you notice a frown coming on, even during poses that might be relaxing. Uh, you might hold tension in your jaw, perhaps it's in your shoulders. Perhaps it's in the hands, you start to make fists, or perhaps it's in the feet where you're sort of crunching and squeezing the toes, wherever it might be for you, just notice and try and let go with every exhale. You might be feeling the back release in ways that it hasn't before. If what you're feeling is not pain or very intense discomfort, try and ease it with the breath. And then inhale, bring the knees back to center slowly. And we exhale and drop them over to the other side. So knees dropping to the right. Head turning to the left, keeping the left shoulder in contact with the floor. And again, in this position, you might find that one side feels very different to the other. And that's okay. It's something to take note of, but not to worry about.
when we move more slowly through yoga and hold these physical poses for longer, we allow ourselves to move from fight or flight, also known as the sympathetic nervous system, towards the parasympathetic or rest and digest. And that's very beneficial for us to be in that state of rest and digest more often, particularly with the sorts of lives that many of us lead nowadays, the pace of modern life, And when we hold poses for longer like this as well, we really allow some really deep work to happen, both physically, but also mentally and perhaps spiritually. We can move beyond stretching muscles and ligaments and to stretching the connective tissue known as fascia. When you're ready, inhale and slowly bring the knees back to the center. Really, really slowly. And then we come into reclined bound angle pose. Now you might want a block for this under your upper back. And if that is the case, you place it in between the shoulder blades lengthwise. So you would take the block and place it like this. Then bringing the feet together, soles of the feet together and letting, letting the knees drop out to the sides. Mikhail speaks French, not really English, so that's why from time to time I'm speaking to him in French. Apologies for that. Breathing here. So if you don't have a block under your upper back, you just lie flat on your back, perfectly fine. You won't be getting the same shoulder opening, but what you will be getting with the soles of your feet together and the knees dropping out, is a big opening through the inner thighs and just generally in the hip area. Again, might feel very intense. You can place blocks or cushions or pillows under your knees if you need that support or just trust gravity on your knees, surrender to gravity and breathe here. When we move slowly through a physical yoga practice like this, we might begin also to gain awareness and consciousness of all that yoga is. In the West, it's often become a form of physical exercise or fitness, but actually yoga is a very ancient tradition that is first of all diverse. There are many, many different schools of yoga, but with most of them, there isn't just a physical element to yoga. There's also a deep mental and spiritual practice, something that sometimes gets lost in some of the physical practices that are practiced outside of India. And sometimes when we move more slowly like this, we perhaps come a little closer to the true meaning of yoga because the purpose of the physical postures is to actually bring the body to a state of ease and comfort, ready for meditation. And in some of these poses, 
you might feel yourself come almost to that meditative state, but perhaps not the first time you do them, if you're feeling a lot of physical intensity, but that's okay. They're poses you can do over and over again. And with time, you'll notice the changes. And from here, really slowly, starting to move out of the pose. So maybe using your hands to bring the knees together first and then rolling onto one side, moving any blocks out of the way and coming into our final relaxation, flat on the back, just stretching the legs out straight they can be as wide as the mat, letting the toes flop out, palms facing up. And all you need to do is just lie here in stillness, which can be a lot harder than it sounds. But just letting the body sink into the mat. Trusting the earth to support you. Thanking your body, thanking yourself, thanking the universe for this practice. And really softening everything, the space between the eyebrows, the tongue in the mouth, the jaw, the back, the hips, the legs the hands and the feet. And again, if anything comes up here, either physical sensations, thoughts, emotions, any of those things or anything else, just letting them pass you by like clouds in the sky. And this posture, even though it might look like or feel like we're doing nothing, is arguably the most important one in all of the physical yoga practice because it's here in stillness and in a real state of complete rest that we allow our body to absorb all the benefits of the practice we've just done. And this is where the real change, the real transformation happens. Stay here as long as you need to. Or otherwise start to bring the awareness slowly back to the breath, back to the physical body, back to the room, wiggle the fingers and toes, start to maybe roll the wrists and the ankles, maybe stretch the arms overhead like you're waking up in the morning and then bending the knees, drawing the knees towards the chest, hugging the knees to the chest, rocking from side to side, massaging the lower back, and then coming onto one side, preferably the right, the left side if you have low blood pressure, using your right arm as a pillow, 
and just taking a moment in fetal position. Then using your left arm and perhaps straightening the left leg to help you come up to a seated position. You can keep the eyes closed. Coming into that seated position, cross-legged. Sit bones grounded, opening through the chest, rolling the shoulders back and then bringing the hands to heart center, lifting the chest towards the thumbs. And together we take a big inhale and exhale through the mouth. And then inhale to on. Thumbs to the third eye, open mind, thumbs to the mouth, truthful words, thumbs to the heart centre, peace and love to all. Thank you so much for joining us for this practice. Thank you so much to Mikhail for demonstrating and participating and we'll see you next time.